Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing our mesh creation from code. We're going to learn how the UV coordinates work and display a single body part from a sprite sheet. Let's get started. So, in the previous video we covered how a mesh is created. It is composed of vertices, UVs, and triangles. I mentioned that the UV coordinates are the position in the texture that gets applied to that particular vertex. The UV coordinates are represented as a percentage of the texture where the values go from 0 to 1. The lower left corner of the texture has a coordinate of 0, 0 and the upper right corner has a coordinate of 1, 1. In order to make this easier to manage, let's make a function that converts pixels into percentages. So let's go into our code, go down here, and we're going to create a new function. Public, we're going to return a vector2 that will be used for our UVs, we're going to call it convert pixels to UV coordinates. So in this function we're going to receive our values as pixels and we're going to convert them into UV coordinates. In order to do that we're going to receive an int x, an int for our y, then we also need an int for our texture width and a int for our texture height. So in here, using some very simple math, we can convert them into UV coordinates. So we're going to return a new vector2. On the x, we're going to return the x divided by the texture width. And on the y, we're going to return the y in pixels divided by the texture height. And obviously convert these down to float so that the result is not cast down to an end. And there you go. We are now correctly converting from pixels into UV coordinates. Now with the mesh square we created previously, we are currently displaying the whole texture. Now let's display only the head. The sprite sheet is in 512 by 512 and the pixel coordinates for the head are 0, 380 with a width of 128 and a height of 128. So let's set these values up here. I'm going to put an int for my head x which will be 0, an int for my head y, which is 380, an int for my head width, which will be 128, an int for my head height, which is also 128, an int for my texture width, which is 512, and an int for my texture height, which is also 512. Okay, now that we have our values, let's apply them to our UVs. So UV of 0, we're going to use our function to convert and put the head x and y texture width, texture height, and we're going to use all three. Yeah. Okay, now let's set them up correctly. So for our UV 0, we want the coordinates of our left top corner. So left top, left is just the head x, top we got the head y plus the head height. Okay, for my second UV, I want the right top, so head x plus my head width, head y plus the head height. For my UV2, I want the left bottom, so just head x, head y, and for the three, I want the right bottom, so head x plus head width and just the head y. So there you go, the UVs should now be correctly displaying and the square that we created previously should now display the head. Let's test it out. And there it is, we're using UVs to display just a portion of our texture in our mesh. So now let's improve the code and make some variables to store the UVs of the various body parts. We're going to create a function that will return four UV coordinates representing a body part in our sprite sheet. We have to make sure that we're returning the positions in the correct pattern that we set up for our vertices, so we're going to continue to work in a Z shape. Back to our code, go down here, and this function should actually be private to keep things nice and clean, and we're going to make a new function, and it will be a private, return an array of vector2, and call it get UV rectangle from pixels. We're going to return all four positions of a rectangle defined by the pixels in our sprite sheet. 
So in here, the values that we require are our x, our y, we need the width of the body part that we want to select, the height, and then we also need the texture width, and in for texture height. Now we're going to return an array of vector two. We're going to return four vector twos. Now again, remember to keep the Z position. So the first one is left top. Then we've got right top, left bottom, and right bottom. So let's just add a comment so we don't forget the direction we're moving in. So we have 0, 1, then we have a 1, 1, then we have a 0, 0, and then finally we have a 1, 0. Okay, so this is the pattern that we want to make sure we always use, so all the UVs and vectors and triangles, everything matches. Okay, so now in here we want the 0, 1, and we're going to essentially do the same thing that we did in here. So actually in here, we're not going to return an array of vector two, but rather we're going to use the function that we use since, well, that's much easier. So for the left top, I want the X. For the top, I want the Y plus the height and then texture width and texture height. For right top, I want the X plus width. Top, I want the Y plus height. Texture width and texture height. Now in here I want left bottom, so just x y texture width texture height. And down here I want right bottom, so for right x plus width for the bottom just the y and texture width texture height. And there you go. Now we have a nice helper function that will help us convert from pixels and grab four UVs to represent our body part square. Now let's make a variable to store the value of a body part UV. So up here, I'm going to make a private. It will be an array of vector two and call it head down UV. And here we're going to set up the head down UV, which we're going to use our function and our x is going to be 0, our y is going to be 380, the width 128, height 128, texture width and texture height. And now let's comment this out. Now let's make a function that will take our body part UV array and apply that to our main UV array. Go down here and add another one, private void apply UV to UV array. Now in here, we're going to receive an array for our UV that we want to apply. And we're going to receive a, another array for the main UV of our mesh that we're going to pass in to be modified. Since we want to modify this array, we're going to pass it with the ref. Now technically, we don't need to add ref in here since an array is already a reference type, but in order to keep our code clean and make it clear that this function is going to modify this array, we're going to add the ref. So in here, we're going to apply the UV to our main UV. So going to take the main UV of zero and add to our UV of zero. Three, two, one, and one, two, three. So in here, let me just make a note with regards to performance. Since in the end, we want the system to be very performant, we're going to make the assumption that the UV and main UV are correct meaning they are both not null and they both have four elements. But while we're developing, it might help to always test to make sure our values are correct. So let's validate our inputs anyway. So in here, we're going to test if our UV array is null or the UV contains less than four elements or our main UV is null or the main UV dot length also has less than four elements. If it is not, we're going to throw a new exception. So this will validate our inputs, but once the whole system is set up, we can comment this out and assume everything will work correctly. Performance is all about making assumptions on your data. And once the system has been fully tested and you can be confident that you are never sending invalid values into this function, 
you can remove the input validations and make the whole thing more performant. So, but for now, since we are developing the system, let's keep the checks on, which should never be triggered since we always want to make sure that whenever we call this function, we always call it with valid values. Okay, so up here, where we define our head down UV, we can now use our new function to apply this head down UV into our main UV array. So we're going to apply UV to UV array. We're going to choose the head down UV and apply it, passing the reference to our UV. And here we can also comment this out. So all we need to make sure is that we are correctly initializing with the correct values. In here it will copy our variable UV into our UV array. This way we can apply this several times without constantly having to do this calculation. Let's test it out and see if everything is working exactly the same as it should. And there you go, still working the same, no errors, nothing awesome. Now let's add more variables to contain all the body parts in our sprite sheet. Okay, so another note here. On my sprite sheet, I only have the sprite for the head right. I don't have a sprite for the head left. But we can easily mirror our head right UV by sending the reverse coordinates on the X. So our width is going to be negative and our X will be 256. So the right corner and the width negative like that. And we can test this out, place this in here, make sure that we are displaying the left head. There you go. Our sprite sheet only has the head facing the right, but we can easily mirror it and have the head left. This way, we don't have to waste space on our sprite sheet. Okay, I have all my UVs set up. Now let's make some buttons just for fun to modify our UVs in real time. I'm going to go down here. So in here I'm going to use the CM debug class to create a button on the UI. The button will be somewhere on the left side. And this button will set up the head down UV. And the action that it will trigger, it will use this function to apply our head down UV. And after we apply to our UV array, we have to make sure we update our mesh mesh.uv equals uv. Essentially the uv array only gets sent to the graphics card once you apply it directly to the mesh. This is a property and when you set this it gets automatically uploaded to the graphics card. Let's add another one. This one body down and another one let's just say the sword. Sword uv and body down uv. Okay let's make the buttons under one another, so put that in there, and there we go. Yep, we have our buttons in here, and now we can modify the UV in real time. Boom, there you go, head down, now it's the body down, and now it's a sword. Yep, as you can see, we can easily modify the UV in real time. And there you have it. In this video, we covered how to apply the correct UV to our mesh based on the pixel position in our texture and modify that mesh in real time. Based on this, you can see how you could easily do sprite animations if you had a sprite sheet with the various frames drawn rather than separated in body parts. You would just automatically switch sprites in real time based on the frame rate of your animation. In the next video, we're going to cover how to add multiple body parts and size them accordingly. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, see you next time.